This work is called Lost in Translation, Kritoa. And um, to open up, there are two main themes in this, in this, this work. Um, the first theme being Kritoa, herself as a historical character, who I will get to in a bit. And then secondly, once again, the Tower of Babel. Um, and I sew these two together um, in this work. Um, so to start off with, um, you'll start on some of the text in the background and I'll just give you some insight to that. Um, the first one on the left hand top left hand corner here is you strike a woman, you strike the rock. And um, these words um, actually come from a very famous resistance song um, and have become somewhat of a to symbolize um, courage and strength expressed um, at the Women's March of 1956 in South Africa, where the women refused to give in to the increasing oppression um, without a form of protest. So to give you more insight to that, before the 1950s, only black men were required to carry passes, and this gave them permission to be in an urban area um, only people as well who could find work were given a pass and this allowed the government then to control the influx of black men into the cities and these pass laws um, they were one of the most hated of the apartheid laws because men were repeatedly arrested under this law and it had an effect on turning the majority of the population into criminals so in 1952 the government announced that black women would also be, be, um, would, be give, would have to carry passes and the women actively resisted this. Um, the idea began in 1955 at a meeting uh, where the suggestion was made um, at the FSAW um, that the women should go on a protest to Pretoria um, and protest against the government, against the laws that oppressed them. So on the 9th of August 1956, I think there were around about 20,000 women of all different races um, and they marched to the Union Building um, in Pretoria and they handed over a petition to the South African Prime Minister um, at the time, which was Hans Stradom. Um, and this was a significant turning point um, in the struggle against the unjust apartheid laws. Um, through the march uh, was again, you know, the march was was against the restrictive pass laws. Um, it did lead to significant changes um, and also towards the emancipation of women. So uh, even though it's really a small little snippet that we see coming out here, um, that was that information is about. And then moving across here, we have the text which was taken from a, um, a, a poem that I sourced, which says, Shoot 100 arrows into heaven. If they return dull, dulled and bloodied, your war against God has a chance. And this, once again, like some of the other works, references the, the city of, uh, or the Tower of Babel, um, and this was a poem written to really say to the people when they, they try to challenge God is to say that you really don't have a chance. Um, and I just found it quite a humorous and interesting um, poem. And uh, that's why I placed it here. And so I tie this in, this idea of, especially on this work, um, of language. Um, in with the key character here who is Kritoa and I'm first going to just give a little bit of information about Kritoa before I sort of connect the dots here but um, Kritoa she was a Khoisan woman um, and she worked as a translator for the Dutch East India Company um, she was around uh, I think 11 years old when she started working for Jan van Riewijk um, she worked in his home as a playmate and also a nanny for his children and um, it's not really clear how she came to end up 
uh, whether she went there willingly or whether it was actually her uncle who was um, a koi leader um, who actually bartered her for his own gain. There's no real information that speaks of uh, how she got into the home of Jan van Riewijk. Um, but she was also the first young girl to be taken into a European household. Um, and I think this is just such a powerful character because um, if we look back the position that she was in um, at that time, um, she was, yeah, she like I was saying, she was, she was the first young girl to be taken into a European household um, as a nursemaid in the Cape Colony. She was also one of the first interpreters between the fort and the and the the, the koi koi um, on the peninsula. Um, she was also the first to be baptized in the in the Dutch Reformed Church, um, and she was also the first koi woman to marry a European. Um, and I think she was the first also to receive a Christian burial in the castle. So she really lived between between two worlds. You know, she really she lived between her people who were the Koi son and then she also lived of being able to speak both languages. Um, she lived in the household of the Dutch and more so in the house of one of the leaders at the time as well. And so I just found that really, really interesting. And so on the rest of the works, we see a text on the right hand side over here down at the bottom and on the left hand side as well. And this text is actually from a poem by uh, Maya Angelou. Um, it is called Still I Rise. And um, some people might be familiar with it, some people might not be. And I would encourage people to, to read this poem because it does tie in with um, a lot of the other content that is on on this piece so so thank you for spending the time with me to go through this work um, of Kritoa